busy night for players and fans of high school football, but will their school spirit get washed away by the rain or could the cold keep fans out of the stands? Let's hope not, but right. meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli is here with details in our no wait weather. Justin, what's out there tonight? And thank you, Mike and Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Temperatures are going to be cool, really not that bad for this time of year. Right now, we are seeing temperatures into the mid 50s up and down the valley and lower 50s uh, outside the valley, some upper 50s, especially into Wadena County right now, and we'll see them fall through the 40s through this evening. So prepare for that if you have plans outside. Also, a brisk northerly wind pumping down cool air from Canada, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, we have seen a little bit of sunshine, especially from Fargo into northwestern Minnesota, more cloud cover into Lakes Country, south of Jamestown, Devil's Lake Basin, and Northern Valley. Now, the rain is just going to be some sprinkles along the international border, most of us staying dry through this evening, but clearing skies will make us cool. There's your 40s through the evening and upper 30s overnight as we do have some frost concerns, especially in our northern and northeastern counties. Now, most of Saturday looks dry. We could get a good amount of rain Saturday night through Monday morning. We'll have the details on that coming up later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. And make sure you have your Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecast and conditions. Just search VNL Weather in the app store and download it for free. We want to show you some viewer pictures where they are of two vehicles on fire. This is near Wapaton. We got in contact with Richland County deputies who tell us the fire started uh, semi jackknifed on I-29 south of Wapaton. It was struck by another vehicle from behind both vehicles catching on fire on southbound I-29 near mile marker 19. Now, deputies and highway patrol are on the scene. They tell us that traffic control measures are in place. Hundreds of students stayed home today surrounding a rumored school shooting threat in East Grand Forks. 550 were absent today out of the more than 1,900 students that regularly attend class. Some parents say they kept their kids home for safety reasons, even though police say the threat was found to be just a rumor. Extra officers were on school grounds today. Superintendent Mike Colness tells us, as a parent himself, he understands the decision to stay home, adding it does have a large impact on the overall school operation. We're very lucky and fortunate that way that we have uh, such a limited amount of those instances that happen in our community. West Fargo is the least robbed city in North Dakota, according to a home security website. Now, that same website lists Fargo as the most robbed city in the state. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkiewicz takes a closer look at the study and asks how two neighboring cities can be so on opposite ends of the spectrum. Our officers that we have out working the streets every day, they do a wonderful job protecting our community. West Fargo is the least robbed city in North Dakota according to a report by FrontPoint, which sells home security systems. Yes, we do reporting, we do track um, our violent crimes and robberies and burglaries and those things. Assistant Chief Jerry Boyer says the data is consistent with what his department reports, but a closer look shows why West Fargo and Fargo received such different superlatives, Fargo being named most robbed in the state. The report using 2017 FBI data only considers cities with a population of more than 30,000 people. And just five cities within North Dakota meet that criteria. And West Fargo didn't even meet that criteria 10 years ago. Our crime data has shown that robberies have been decreasing over the last five years. So we were down 9% last year from the year before. Fargo PD's public information officer, Jessica Schindeldecker, says Fargo's very safe too. Most of the time, um, there's, a very, there's a high success rate of actually capturing these individuals who are committing these crimes. The report shows Fargo sees six robberies per 10,000 people. Meanwhile, West Fargo has less than two crimes per 10,000 people. Most of the time when we hear about robberies and where they're occurring is typically at banks and or gas stations. So if you take a look at uh, Moorhead and West Fargo and Fargo, how many banks and gas stations there are per for the city versus what they have. Still, officers in both Fargo and West Fargo agree. To have uh, one agency singled out or one city, is it's great that it's us, but uh, we're not in a very high crime area anyway. The metro isn't exactly a dangerous place to be. In Fargo, Roseskivis, Valley News Live. The report also finds robbery rates across the country are at an all-time low over the last 20 years. West Fargo is the 16th least robbed city in the U.S. The state of Minnesota gets an honorable mention with Maple Grove named the fourth least robbed in all of the U.S.
It's Friday, time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. 35-year-old Justin Hillison is wanted for possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. Call law enforcement if you have any information on his whereabouts. In Grand Forks, authorities are on the lookout for this individual, Nicole Smith. Smith is wanted for felony accomplice to robbery for helping two other people threaten staff with physical violence in an attempt to sneak someone out of a secure facility. Now, the other two have been arrested. If you know where Smith is, call the sheriff's office. A criminal complaint has been filed against a Viking Minnesota man after Red Lake County authorities say he shot at children. 19-year-old Cameron Audette is accused of intentionally shooting two kids with a BB gun and injuring one of them. Deputies say Audette shot at another child but missed. A shipment of drugs is on its, on its way into the country has been stopped by Border Patrol agents. Officers at Pembina's port of entry searched a shipment of jeans and t-shirts to find drugs hidden amongst the clothing. 164 grams of marijuana were found, 123 grams of psychedelic mushrooms, and 884 grams of THC gummies. Fargo police are asking neighbors to look out for each other by closing their garages. Officers say it only takes one open or unlocked apartment garage to victimize others because thieves can break through the sheetrock or drywall to get into the next attached garage. Police are getting creative in Dilworth after drivers weren't following a new traffic sign. They attached balloons in hopes of bringing more attention to the sign. The right turn only sign now sits on the corner of Center Avenue and 34th Street South. However, while we were there today, the balloons weren't doing much. One driver we talked with says while something needed to be done, he's not a fan of this fix. That's a tough one because you, know, you, know, you, you would say a traffic light, but then how are, do you make that light work with the light right there on Main and Highway 10? Other drivers, te drivers tell us that they think a permanent barrier is the only thing that will fix the problem. It's unclear if Dilworth police will make any additional changes. And here's a heads up for you so that you can avoid a headache during Monday's commute. 42nd Street South in Fargo will close to southbound traffic between 32nd and 30th Avenue South. You will be detoured to 30th Avenue South via 45th Street. The closure is expected to last for up to two weeks. The overall road work project should be completed by mid-October. Are you busy this weekend? Help is still needed as Grand Forks continues to recover from the soaking it got last week. The city's emerging emergency management team is looking for volunteers to help with relief efforts. There are 15 homes that need help dealing with what the flood left behind. Cleanup hopefully will wrap up this weekend. And if you can help, give the city a call at 701-780-8213. Later on Valley News Live at 6, Minnesota lawmakers making sure diabetics have what they need in an emergency situation. And high temperatures today only into the upper 50s. We should be into the mid 60s this time of year. We are going to be cool as we go through the next seven days with a lot of rain in some areas. Details coming up.